James with OnlineCarShow.net. In this video, we're going to be discussing catch cans. So without hesitation, let's get this video started. Well, before we go too far into the video, I do want to let y'all know I updated my website, OnlineCarShow.net. You can see there in under the mod list link, there's a full listing of mods and videos attached to those mods. For every mod that's on the ZR1, the Camaro, the Focus, uh, it's all there, real easy format. You can go through and click individual videos and stuff. You may not know that we're out there. Also, I've got a full listing under my playlist on YouTube. You can click there anytime uh, and organize mods and products under Chevrolet Camaro, Corvette, you know, the mods themselves, whether it be suspension, performance, exterior, interior, it's all there, well organized. Also, be sure to hit that like and subscribe below. That helps my videos to grow and help support my channel. As far as upcoming events, uh, I am a planning to attend this weekend. It's also my birthday weekend. Uh, plan to attend the Corvette Owners Club of Houston car show in Sugarland Town Square. I've gone to this car show five or six times in the past. It's a great show. Open car show for any make and model of car. Bring it out there. Come see the cars. It's a good time. Now to go over catch cans. Uh, if y'all haven't known before, in my past videos, I've probably done three or four videos on catch cans. I've installed them on almost every sports car I've owned, whether it be the Camaro, the ZR1, the Z06, the Stingray, uh, my O2 Trans Am. They all had catch cans on them, and I've always been amazed of the gunk and oil and gas mixture that you collect in those cans. Uh, it's always shocking. I highly recommend them. Uh, I'm not gonna get too far in this video of you know, how scientifically it worked. Those interested in more review like that and how catch cans collect oil and so forth, go out, check out Engineering Explained. He's got a great video on that. I learned a ton by watching it and it'll help y'all as well. Uh, now when I was deciding on a catch can slash breather system for the ZR1 being a boosted application, I wanted something built quality that would be able to you know, take the added pressure of the boost. Uh, I reached out to Houston Performance Solutions. He, Philip, recommended going with the uh, Mighty Mouse catch can. I come to save the day. And I've also heard of them in the past and seen them, their catch cans on many cars at car shows and so forth. Uh, so I decided to go with them. They were a little bit pricier, of course, than something you'll find on eBay and so forth, but I wanted to make sure that I had some quality in the car. Uh, as I mentioned, the Mighty Mouse catch can that I have, and I'll show a picture here, it does have a breather, uh, a small breather system attached to the top. This isn't a full breather system, which you're going, you know, a thousand plus horsepower, you might look into something like that. I think this breather is more built for the, you know, 600 to 800 range in horsepower. Uh, as far as tools you're going to need to get this done, I went and kind of did some research on different AN fitting tools. These catch cans do use the AN aluminum fittings, which are really, you know, they scratch really easily. So there's two options you can go with, and I'm going to tell you which one in the end I agree with the most. There's an adjustable AN wrench. This goes from uh, zero all the way up to 16 in wrench size, socket size for the AN fittings. Uh, everything on this catch can is going to be a 6 or a 10, I'm finding out. So you only really need two sizes off this, but it might help you in the future on your car. So I went ahead and ordered it just to have, you know, a wider range of sizes. Also, I found this kit on Amazon. It comes with a 6, an 8, and a 10 AN fitting wrench. Uh, it was, I think, $5 more than this. This was $25 and this was $20. Uh, but this I recommend a little bit better because it's gonna have more of a tight fitting, you got less chance of wiggle and so forth. You're gonna see in an adjustable wrench. But I think they're both good tools to have in your toolbox. And I'm gonna put a link below if y'all wanna go get the exact same wrenches that I purchased and I'm using in the video. 
Now, before I get to uh, emptying the catch can, because of where we had to mount uh, the catch can in the ZR1, it's not in the prime location for it because my B3R expansion, expansion tank is taking up that spot. So we basically had to mount it, or uh, Houston Performance Solutions did the work. They mounted it to the master brake cylinder mount, and it's not the best location in the future. I may move it, but it'll work for now. But with the fittings that Mighty Mouse Solutions included in their box, it only had the uh, 180 degree or true out, you know, straight out connection. But I did find on their website, they sell a 120 degree. So we're gonna, I ordered this, we're gonna be installing it, and I'm also gonna put in silicone lines. Uh, I just like the look of silicone, nothing against the rubber lines, but they're a little bit cleaner looking, shinier looking, and uh, don't have all the riding and so forth. So we're gonna get that installed, uh, and then I'm gonna empty the can. I've only put maybe 100 miles at most on the vehicle, 150, so I'm not expecting that there'll be a lot in there, but I am getting the oil changed next week as, as well as uh, new plugs, wires, and a retune at Sorian Tuning. So just wanna make sure she's 100% for that, and I'm gonna clean it, empty it out, and clean up the fittings, et cetera. So far, it's been a really good can, no issues so far, but again, I've only owned it maybe a month now. Let's go ahead and get to it, and I'm gonna show you all before and after of changing the fittings. Well, as you can see, we got the catch can mounted here. It's actually mounted on the same mount that the master cylinder and brake booster is. Uh, really good catch can. We're gonna be taking it off real quick before emptying it. Uh, because of the straight connection I mentioned here, and it, the loop that it had to create to go back into the valve cover. So instead, we're gonna use that 120 degree, kind of re-angle this a little bit and have a straight pipe go in there instead of a loop. And I'm also gonna replace it with silicone line. But uh, usually, this catch can would be mounted on the other side where that B3R uh, expansion take is in front of my dry saw. So there's the before. Uh, I'm gonna cut to it in a little bit. I'm not gonna show the work, but I'll show you all the after. Well, here's the after. I don't know if y'all remember before, there's a huge loop right here. You can rewind and see it. But anyways, by having this 120 degree fitting from Mighty Mouse, uh, allowed me to get rid of that loop and have a shorter line and straight fitting. Also replaced it, the rubber with a silicone line. It's a little bit shinier. I just like the silicone heater line a little bit better. Uh, rubber's fine if that's what you got. And uh, use the Gates power grip heat clamps or heat shrink, heat shrink clamps i love these freaking things they just uh heat shrink around the line and the only bad bad sign is if you ever have to replace the line you're gonna have to cut that shrink off but they look so clean uh you know to use other than the metal lines now we're going to get into cleaning the catch can and let's see exactly how much crap's in it Well, as I mentioned, this has only been, you know, 100, 150 miles maybe at most, so there's a chance there may be nothing in here. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it and see what all we got, if I can figure this out. All right, 9 16ths it is. Let's see what happens. Well, it's wet, but there's not a whole lot in there. But as you can see, there's still some oil condensation in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean this off, put it back on there, make sure the baffle's cleaned off, and she's ready for the oil change. With the mesh system that it looks like this has in here, you do wanna make sure that that mesh over time, if it starts getting clogged up and stuff, that you go ahead and replace it. We're just gonna screw this bad boy back in. 100 miles, there isn't a whole lot in there. And that's good, actually. 
but you can see some condensation so it's doing its job. Guessing when it has more fluid in there, this is the actual drain. Mother One eternity later. Well, there wasn't much fluid in there, but there was a lot of, you know, condensation and signs of the fluid starting to build up. As I said, it's only been maybe a hundred miles since we put this on the car, so I wasn't expecting a whole lot, but it is going in for an oil change next week, so I wanted to see how much had, uh, you know, accumulated. Well, I'm always amazed what comes out of catch cans and so forth. And I, as I said before, I highly recommend these. You put these on any car that you're putting any kind of horsepower out of or that comes factory with any kind of horsepower. But that's it for this week. Uh, be sure, as I said, to hit that like and subscribe below. Next week, we've got some awesome content coming. I'm taking the car in for an oil change, new plugs and wires. Uh, and she's getting dyno tuned at Sorian Tuning, Matt Sorian. Only guy, you know, I respect for tunes and so forth. Houston Performance Solutions gonna be doing all the work before it goes there. Uh, shouldn't take but two or three days. We're also gonna get the uh, support block or the uh, block supported in the supercharger. I don't know if y'all know this, but if, if you don't get those supported, as you add boost, you know, if you don't get it done, this here can happen, you know, inside your supercharger and in turn go down into your cylinders and your heads and all that. So it, you know, it's not good mojo. <laughs> but thank you all so much for watching my videos. Look forward to next week and providing you all with that content. Hope everyone has a great week. Thank you.